And I, I try to be nice. Oh, welcome back. I appreciate you. So sad. K -K -K. K -K -K. Young nigga, I got old cats spazzing on their ass. I got product on my whole ass. What's going on, guys? It's your man C to the J to the C. Y'all already know how I be. Straight from the 305 Miami-Dade County. And welcome to my channel. If you're first joining, tune in, bro. Like, I appreciate y'all. Just come on in. Come on in, bro. It's me, the best story time teller on YouTube. That's how I feel. And I'm feeling what I'm feeling. So, yeah, like, basically, y'all, like, if you love the best story time, the tears, the enjoyment, the happiness, all of that good stuff when it comes to story time, then hit the subscribe button and hit the bell and subscribe to my channel. And you gonna tune in every single week. Remember to hit the bell because sometimes you people gonna tell you when I uh, uh, upload something, so you basically kind of lack. So basically, when you hit the bell, it tells you automatically when I first upload. And I just want y'all to stay in tune and know when I first upload. So say I'm gonna tell y'all why I left Crocs at Vion Premium Outlet here in Orlando, Florida. I used to work at Crocs, and basically, when I first started off, it was good, like Spanish management, and basically, like uh, it was a uh, uh, manager named Yonalias. Then there was Jocelyn. She came in late, but she came from another store. Took a while to adjust her, but yeah, me and Jocelyn was cool. There was a lot of, um, um, Mike was my dog. Mike used to be lazy one, stuff like that. And like, yeah, like it was great magic, but magic always was constantly changing. And uh, basically like, sometimes it was annoying, like, cause like, it was remind you, this is a part-time job. You have to do a lot for like $10 an hour. And I barely got hours like, average hour I got every week was 23 hours 23 hours bro and most of my friends working 40 hours so yeah this was life with crocs but i got to learn so much like like i i, I learned the spanish and portuguese too like if i'm saying a special right like buy two get one free or buy yeah buy two get one free or buy one get the other one free so i'm gonna say in spanish so i basically said but uh, um, compa dos, like I said, gratis mean buy two or get one free. Buy two to get one and get one free. Or compa uno segundo cuarenta percento, meaning buy one and get the second one for forty percent off. And let's say in Portuguese, compa dois, compa dois, at the set of gratis, or compa un segundo cuarenta percento. That's the same thing. Buy two, get one free. So I learned that and, and Guten Morgen, German, um, Francais, je parle Francais très bien. Oh, yeah, I ain't know that. You better chill. Like, I speak French, all right? But that's another story, <laughs> all right? So yeah, um, working at Crocs, um, it was a job. McDonald's was nearby. Dallas used to be my favorite spot. Um, I had um, Desiree. She was my favorite manager. Me and Desiree talked about everything. She was also my my, my teacher too. She taught me um, the sales, how to uh, basically approach customers, things like that. She was basically my maestra. Maestra in Spanish means my teacher. So um, she basically told me the ins and now. I, I, I met so much people. There was two mics, like the fat um, lazy mic, and there was my. We talked about everything. We talked about um, reggaeton. Got learned so much reggaeton so much time but like the main story i'm not gonna tell you like that's a whole long story telling y'all how my one year and a half with that crocs was let's talk about why i left so one day jocelyn um jocelyn basically like uh she usually send everybody to work tell them um to uh, lunch break tell them when to go lunch break shit like that so one day jocelyn was like um um, I was helping the customer. I was done helping the customer. The customer was happy, things like that. What I didn't know is that um, wh where I helped the customer out, the customer left a lot of shoes there in the process. So basically, the shoes she left there, Jocelyn was just like, oh, like, um, she seen all the shoes he left, but Jocelyn sent me a lunch. And basically, I told them, oh, let them know that I helped y'all. And they was like, no problem. So um, I went to lunch. I came back. When I came back, Jocelyn said, oh, CJ, I want you to um, clean the shoes um, um, from the counter. And there was a lot of shoes from the counter. I'm like this, bro, I didn't even step in through the store yet. And she already on my case. She telling me like, oh, um, clean the shoes all the counter. I was like, okay, I just came back from lunch break. Let me go in the back. And she said, okay. So I went in the back, put my stuff in, in my locker, all that stuff. And then she basically said, um, CJ, uh, I didn't even step out the back yet. She's like, CJ, I need you to put, go clean the clothes. Uh, from the counter and I was like this okay um I said let me clock in first 
She was like, okay. And then I went and clocked in. She was like, CJ, I need you to go put the, the closing account. I'm saying, I just clocked in. Like, I said, I'm like, okay, I'm going to go do it. I'm like, all right. Like, just like that. So customers need help. And I went to the customers and I told them, like, uh, um, what y'all need help in? And I was helping them out. And she said, CJ, I told you to go clean the stuff out of the account. I'm like, I'm helping the customers. She said, don't worry, I'll help them. She told me, don't worry, I'm helping them. You know, she did. She holding the customers' um, shoes and she looking at me. She looking focused on me. I'm like, what the F? Like, I, bro, at this time I was agitated. I was like, what the F? What the fuck are you on my case for? Like, what? Like, why are you on my case? And she like that. Like, shit is crazy. This and that. So, um, so I, I basically start um, taking the shoes off the counter, ready to put them back. And then, um, um, Yelinette comes. Yelinette's Spanish, but she understands. But Yelinette also had my, that's my dog. She started helping me, um, to put the shoes back. Then Jocelyn comes. She said, Yelinette, I don't want you to help him. I, um, I want CJ to do it for himself. And then she was like, okay. Like she said in Spanish to Yelinette. Yeah, he said, okay. He said, sorry, kind of, um, CJ. And, um, I was, I was, I was just like, in my, in my, I'm like, it's, I'm, I'm annoyed at this point. They might try to help me. Mike Kellen, Mike's like, uh, um, Spanish Mike. Mike tries to help me, and then yelling that said, Mike, I do not want you to help. I want um, CJ to do it for himself. And I said, sorry, man. And they said like that. So at this time, I'm super hot, bro. Like, I'm pissed. I'm saying, like, two people try to help me to make this shit faster. You come on my case. Ever since I come from lunch break, I even come through the door. You just on my, bro, on my D, bro. Like, like, what the fuck is going on, bro? Like, I'm mad. I'm heated right now. So, uh... She don't tell me shit. She just keep on being on my case, just all, all around me, like all that shit. So uh basically, like um Yeah, like I I, I was I was, uh, uh, um I started putting the stuff back. I started putting the stuff back. Then when I put everything uh, when I was like oh, halfway done, she come up to me, she said, CJ, you wanna know why I basically was on to put the stuff back in the counter? At this point, do you think I wanna hear you? You was all in your childish, like, a uh, 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 annoying place. Like, you was all doing that shit, like, since I walked in, on my case and all that stuff. And now you want to explain yourself? Now you want to tell me the reason why you was on my case? When you could tell me the reason up front, and then I would understand, maybe see it from your perspective, or even tell you what really happened and stuff like that. Try to, like, hear the story out. But you want to discipline me first, then tell me why? Basically, like, come on, man, get out of my face. Like, I ain't want to hear you at this point. So basically, like, um... Um, I'm, I'm putting the shoes, uh, all, all the shoes back. She said, CJ, 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 you want to ignore me? She said, okay. I was like, yeah, I'm ignoring someone. So big boss lady come through the door. My manager, Yonaya, she was late. And then um, you see Jocelyn Sage, and then um, Yonaya said, what's wrong? He said, come talk to me in the back. I already knew where this was going, man. So then um, boss lady calls me in the back. I go to the back, and then um, Yonaya said, I, I hear Jocelyn told me that, uh, you basically like um she told you to do something you wasn't listening i said i did do it so like that he said but she said she had, but but then josh was opening her mouth and said how much time did i have to tell you i said but i went to it she said but i had to tell you a lot of times cj i had to tell you over and over and then when i tried to tell you the reason why i had to basically like why you was doing this you didn't want to you didn't want to hear me so jet so your dumb ass just because I didn't make you explain to me the reason why you're punishing me, you went to tell Boss Lady, but I was done with this girl. Like, like me and, and, and Jossie was so cool. Oh, dang, my roommate leaving. I forgot to shout him out, but uh, I'm texting. So yeah, like, I was like done with her. Like, you went to Boss Lady and you said, eh, CJ don't want to talk to me. Eh. So like, that, that's basically what she did. And then basically I'm like, man. So basically like, uh, Basically, I, I, I'm like, I, I'm just like, like, I'm done with her at this point. So, I, uh, so boss lady was like this. So the next time she tell you do something, you do it right away. No, like, a no in the feelings. No, like, uh, reaction. I said, okay, no problem. But at that point, I knew. I said, I'm, I'm gonna listen to her. So at that point, every morning, I said, good morning. I said, she said, good morning. I said, good morning. And I was cold to her. She could see it was different. Me and her was like so close. We talk about life, everything outside of work. But now I can't F with you anymore because I see what type of person you is. You was on your BS and then now, now we could play this game. I like to play games. Y'all know me. I'm petty. I could be the nicest person. I'm a cool guy. But once you get to me, I'm going to show you the lesson I need you to learn so you can know to never disrespect me again. We're going to get this right. We're going to roll it back. All right. So basically like... um. Yeah, so she saw it was different. Like I was listening to her, then she started getting paranoid. She was like, "People are calling me. 
And then a new manager came. She got whispering in the new manager ear saying, oh, like, um, he won't be listening and all that stuff. And this is months later. I'm fast forward in this story. So she was telling the manager that. She was telling um, Yonaya's dad, oh, my roommate coming back. You forgot something. And then Yonaya was writing, me, uh, writing stuff up. Then one day, they basically called me in the back and they said, um, um, new manager said, oh, he basically the guy told me to come go help customers in the back i went in the back while i was heading to the back the customers leave the store when am i supposed to be in this scenario he went and then him and Johnson called me in the back he said oh he told me to go help the customers i was a pain listening to him and basically when i when i decided to go they were leaving so it took a lot of time to tell him i'm like what i was helping the customers and you only told me one time and dude i was heading there they was leaving the store what do you want me to do but those two want to gain up on me it's obvious um jocelyn put stuff in his ears and now these people are playing paranoid and gang to me they're basically like um um jocelyn said we've been writing you up we've writing all this down she said you're, you're constantly having issues with managers and like i don't see the point of this i'm saying like bro you just mad that i'm not effing with you the same way anymore and now y'all doing this so i'm saying all right you the manager you just got here and now you got an issue with me like bro like i was just done with it and then i'm telling uh, um some some of my co-workers co-workers going to back and tell managers what i'm telling now i have like i feel paranoid now mike was still my daughter two mics but there was people that was running their mouth telling managers what i said so it's like who am i supposed to trust at this point like when you're in the room like when you're with co-workers they're supposed to be a sanctuary the people that have your back now you got them that's telling like, i can't f with you the same no more it's just like bro like come on so basically it was just like it was just like bro like um then um your nally is calling me in the back again she's like oh people saying me this people saying me this jocelyn is not going anywhere then i tell her what was my issue with jocelyn what she did to me like months ago and while we have this she said you need to get over it and when the manager comes in your face and say you need to get over how you feel that's when you know it's a wrap you know like you gotta leave that place so they said, I need to get over what Jocelyn, like how Jocelyn treat me like months ago. And then you got a new manager who Jocelyn spoke to and uh, whispering in your ears, told all her nonsense. And now he basically said, I'm giving issues. And he said, oh, for now on, if you don't respect the managers, then basically we just got sent you home. So paranoia is everywhere because I'm not effing with Jocelyn. So at this, bro, like I couldn't deal with it anymore. And my roommate said, you got two choices. You could continue going to this job or you could find peace, turn your head, walk away from that store and never look back. And then one day I planned out perfectly. I blocked all their numbers, assistant manager, even some coworkers, because I needed to go find a way to reach out to me. Last day I paid cool. I was all happy, excited. Said, oh, CJ, you're doing so guys. I can't wait to see you guys tomorrow. They never knew I was leaving. Then basically I, I replied to a, they sent a viral message to every single one of when they say in schedules. I replied to that and said, for the past one year and a half, I've done with y'all BS. Things they did to me over the one year and a half that they that I never told people of, I let every one of my single coworkers um know. And then basically Basically, like I sent the email, blocked their numbers, and I was out. I was gone from Crocs. The coworkers messaged me, said, Oh, a lot of people said you left, or people saw your message uh, by email. They can't believe um, this happened to you. They did this to you. They even told me one time that I stank. And so I, they told me, like, bro, they, it was disrespect to marry uh, the one year and a half I was done. I was out of that place, didn't want to deal with that place no more. I have my freedom. I left Crocs. And yeah, man, like dealing with um Jocelyn, these type of managers, and you have coworkers talking behind your back. I I knew how to leave and i left crocs and that was it man like just always find your peace if something is trying to ruin that bro just just leave it it's not worth it at all but y'all know what it is it's your man c to j to c check out my story time playlist uh, i appreciate every single one of y'all stay tuned and y'all already know what it is be breezy